In this video, I'm going to show you how to use both UIKit and Swift UI in the very same project. Coming up. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco, and today we're going to be using Swift UI in an existing UIKit project. So, this is going to be helpful for all of you guys that are planning on using Swift UI incrementally in your currently existing project, just adapting one view at a time into Swift UI. So let's go ahead and jump right on into it. As you can see over here, we have this typical post application. You have your little scroll view or whatever, and then you go in and click on the face and then it's like a bigger face or something like that. But our post object actually has more than just an image to it. It has a title. So if we were to go over to our Xcode project, and this is, you can see that we did it in the storyboards over here. Um, you have the navigation controller, the post view controller, and then the details view controller. If we go ahead and take a look at our post object, you'll notice that it has both an image and a title on it. So we want to make sure that we're going to be able to display the title. And, you know, maybe you decide this after Swift UI has been officially released. You don't want to do this in beta on a production project because it's not going to be able to be released. But Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to make a brand new details view controller. We're essentially going to be replacing this with a Swift UI um, details view. So let's go ahead and create that uh, details view right now. And we're just going to make sure that we choose Swift UI view and we'll call this a details view. Yeah, very, very clever. So sophisticated. I'm going to go ahead and delete the preview right now. We're on beta in Mojave and you can't see the little thing over here. And even if you even if you could see the canvas over here, it wouldn't work because you have an iOS 12 project. Now, first, right off the bat, we're getting this error right here saying that iOS 13 or that Swift UI uh, essentially all the structures in Swift UI are only available in iOS 13 and up. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that we mark this as uh, available. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that we're checking to see is this iOS 13 and if so then go ahead and move forward and do your thing. So let's go ahead and add in that statement right now and we're just checking if iOS 13 is available then go ahead and move forward. You all good. You good right there. All right. Now, just like our details view controller, we want to make sure that we're going to be, you know, using de um, dependency injection to put in a post in here because that's where we're going to be getting all of our information for the view. Right. So let's go ahead and add that in as well. And then, um, as you can see, just regular initializer. And then uh, we have a constant up here that's going to be holding the post. And then we want to also, you know, stylize the UI a little bit, make it so that the image is up top and then the title is um, down below. So let's go ahead and add that in as well. And as you can see, we're just going to put it in a vertical stack. We're going to be using an image, which is going to represent our, um, you know, our image from our post and then the text is just going to grab the title and luckily a swift ui image can actually create an image from a ui image so as you can see this is a ui image if you just use the initializer with ui image you get an image baby and then we're just going to go ahead and resize it and make sure that it scales to fit the screen size just like it did before the text we're just going to make sure that it's kind of big, nice and sexy, bold, you know, and then we're going to add a little bit of padding in between the image and the text. And then this padding right here is just 200 from the bottom. We just want to push it up a little bit so that it's a little bit higher in the screen. Um, and that's what and that's the padding on a B stack, actually. All right. So now that we have this in place and we have our details view, what we need to do is we need to go over to our details view controller or not the details view controller. We need to go over to the post view controller and we need to go to the specific spot that it's actually navigating and we're using storyboards and we're using segways. So as you can see, we're doing the did select row at index path method. So as you can see, we're just going to be using a segue right here. And once again, we're going to be using that post and passing it into that segue, which is going to be, you know, formatting it right there. Anyways, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and replace this um, this code right here with an if statement that's going to check, hey, is this iOS 13? If yes, then let's go ahead and use that sexy Swift UI. But if not, let's go ahead and use that pretty cool UI kit. And we need to add that logic in here. So let's go ahead and do that now. 
All right, and as you can see, we have the post being accessed once again. We don't need this. We have the post right here, so we're grabbing our post, and then we're going to um, we're going to make sure that we are on iOS 13, and if so, we're gonna run this code that's in here, and then what we need to do is we need to create a reference to our details view, and remember that we need to pass a post into our details view, and then we're gonna be using this very special thing right here, which we're getting an error on. So let's go back up to the top and make sure we're importing Swift UI, and then we'll talk about the UI hosting controller. All right, so we're importing Swift UI. Now we get the sexy um, color syntax, and we're gonna create a reference to the UI hosting controller, which is actually a subclass of UI view controller. So this is actually what's holding all of your content views whenever you start up a brand new uh, project with Swift UI. You have a hosting controller, which is actually holding your views, so your, your Swift UI views. And as you can see, it has an initializer with root view, and you just go ahead and pass whatever root view or whatever view you wanna see into uh, this initializer. So in this case, we wanna create a details view. We're passing that on, right on in, and that's gonna host our details view so that we can see it on the screen. Now, from this point, it's just like working with any other UI view controller because this is essentially a subclass of UI view controller. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab our navigation controller and we're gonna push our host right onto um, right onto the navigation uh, stack and we're just gonna animate it, you know, make it look a little bit sexy. And if we're using iOS 13, then we will be able to navigate to that brand new screen. So let's go ahead and run that and let's see if it works the way that we expect it to. All right, so we have our beautiful, sexy app and when we go in here and we tap on it, we can see, hey, big sexy Simba, because that's the title. So now whenever we go to one of these images, we're actually going to the Swift UI view instead of the uh, details view controller, which is pretty cool. So that's essentially how you are going to be using um, Swift or UI kit and Swift UI together. Essentially, all you need to do is just find that comment, the lowest common denominator which is the UI hosting controller. And once you have that, then you can host all your different Swift UI views and you can um, you know, use UI kit and then you, know, you pick and choose, whatever works for you. So that's pretty much it guys. Hope you learned something new today. If you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, I don't know why you're not. Subscribe y'all. It helps the channel out. And then also be on the lookout for Swift UI Weekly, which is going to be released every single week, hosted by yours truly. Short condensed bites of Swift UI on a weekly basis. Oh yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Go out there and keep coding passionately.